أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فقال النبي عليه الصلاة والتسليم من أحدث في أمرنا فهو رب صدق رسوله النبي الكريم الأمين ونحن ولا ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected brothers and sisters and children السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today I would like to talk to on something very important that is plaguing the Muslim community for the last almost two centuries. And especially in today's time, it is it is going widely and, and exponentially and confusing and misguiding a lot of Muslims, adults and youth as well. The definition of bid'ah. The definition of bid'ah is given by Rasulullah himself. But in today's time, during the last um, century and a half or two centuries, people have defined their own definition of bid'ah, which is itself a bid'ah. When something is defined by Nabi والسلام, and the Quran, we cannot redefine it. That definition is final. So people have defined a, a new bid'ah definition, which is not a bid'ah, but it's basically that definition itself a bid'ah. Second thing is, their own definition of bid'ah, they apply only on certain things and they do not apply the same rule on their own traditions, practices, beliefs and that is against the Sharia of Islam. In the Sharia, when the law is defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam and the, of course, uh, the jurisprudence of Islamic fiqh, that Sharia law apply on everything homogeneously, not specifically on a certain thing. And if similar thing is happening, then it is getting exempted. And this is what I want to talk today. Second point that you should keep in mind because uh, this, this is very important for my discussion. When I do certain thing and I call this is I'm doing it, which has nothing to do with Islam. What does that mean? Man, when I'm doing something and I'm claiming that it has nothing to do with Islam, then is that I'm believing that uh, it is uh, allowed in Islam or not allowed in Islam? People, when they do certain things and they do not apply the, the definition of their own definition of bid'ah on their actions, they say this is worldly thing, this has nothing to do with Islam. My question is, it is absolutely not possible for any Muslim that they can do anything that is not allowed in Islam. For example, when we stand up for a national anthem, because national anthem has nothing to do with Islam, but we stand up. Flag hosting ceremonies, we stand up. And our Malvi Sahib and Peer Sahib and everybody stands up. So when they stand up and they say it has nothing to do with Islam, but they know that it is allowed in Islam. If it is not allowed in Islam, then they won't stand up. So when allow when Islam allows a certain action, it has to do something with Islam. Because we cannot do anything in dunya, in worldly matters, or in ibadat or mu'amilat, or any other spiritual aspect of our life that is outside the definition of Islam, outside the boundaries of Islam, outside the laws of Islam or Islamic Sharia. So we cannot just do this thing that we define a bid'ah and the, de the modern definition of bid'ah which is not defined by any scholars of Islam except recently for the last uh, um, two centuries that whatever Nabi Wasallam did not do, it's a bid'ah. Sahaba did not do, it's a bid'ah. So then, and they say, the Mawlid in Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam is not done by Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. It's a bid'ah and the Sahaba did not do, it's a bid'ah. So my question is, if that is your definition and you consider this definition, then it should not apply only on Mawlid in Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. It should apply on everything across the board. Let me ask you something that I'm going to give you very common sense examples. Recently, there was a pandemic. For the last 15, 14 centuries, Muslims never ever prayed with two meter distance 
with Jamaat in the masjid or outside the masjid. But every one of us, even in Haram, in Mecca, in Medina, in every place, in all his school of thoughts, people prayed with two meter distance. Is that not a bid'ah? Nabi Sallallahu did not do it. Sahaba did not do it. Aima of Fuqaha did not do it. In fact, it is against the teachings of Islam. It is against the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We all committed that. And the only reason was because we were told that the COVID is a contagious disease. You have to pray like this. And there has been no precedence in Islamic Sharia that we prayed like this. But we did it because it was a requirement. It was the requirement by the health authority. It was the requirement by the by the governments. And it was good. It was the right thing to do. But why it is not a bidah? Why it was allowed in Haram? Why it allowed in everywhere, in every masjid, in every place? Let me ask you another question. During the time of Nabi Wasallam and during the time of Sahaba, there was people who were handicapped, disabled, who prayed their prayers, Salat, in Jamaat or individually on a chair. Give me a single example of any book of Hadith where Sahaba or Tabi'een or Tabatabi'een went to the masjid and they took their chair or Masjid provided them chair that they should pray on the chair. Muslim never prayed on chairs. But today, in every masjid, even people have a small excuse, they sit down on the chair. In Haram, in Makki, in Madani, and everywhere. Don't you think it's a bit that? People were handicapped at that time. The people did have some, some of them. This is not a modern disease that people cannot bend their legs. There were some. But they never did because it's a modern times usage of chair that we can do this thing because somebody they cannot bend their legs while they are sitting in tashahud it's it's it's, it's a new thing on masajid we have men minarets minar during the time of nabi alayhi salatu wasalam masjid and Rabbi did not have any minar masjid al qubar did not have any minar Sahaba did not make any minar on the masajid. But in today's time, and for the last several centuries, Muslims started building minars on, on the masajid because it's an identity of a masjid. Sahaba did not do it. We do it. Why it's not a bidah? If milad is bidah, then this should be a bidah. Praying two meter distance, that should be a bidah. Praying on the chair, that should be a bidah. But we don't call it bidah. But when it comes to Maulid and Nabi, it's a bidah. I'm talking, I'm giving you an example only from the religious point of view. And I can quote many examples. Our Tablighi Jamaat brothers around the world, they gathered in Raivind of in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, and, and they come more than Hajj gathering sometime. Where the Sahaba did the gathering of such large gathering from around the world, except Hajj. The universal gathering, the worldwide gathering in Islam is only Hajj. But people gather in Bangladesh, people gathering in India, in Pakistan, in many other places in the name of Tablid. If that ishtima was never, that kind of ishtima was never organized by Sahaba, neither, neither Aima, neither Tabin, Tawa Tabin, and for many centuries, except within the last two centuries when Maulana Ilyas Sahib in India started this thing. So why that ishtima is not a bidah? But we gather for Milad and Nabi is a bidah. Definition should be applied on the same, all gatherings. Quran was never divided into 30 Jews. It was divided later on during the Umayyad time. Sahaba was not involved. There were no Ruku. There were no Arab in Quran. We put it because it safeguard Quran. It organized the recitation of the Holy Quran in Taravi prayers. It was something new. People did it. My dear brothers and sisters, you go around the world, especially in the Western world. All those organizations, those who do not organize Mawlidin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and close off their masajid on 12th Rabi'ul Awal night because it should look like an ordinary night just like any other night of the year. They 
all organized programs for their massages, for their charities, for their causes, and they put ticket on it. They invite ulama, they invite scholars to discuss Islam, to discuss our social issues, the ummah issues. It's all religious matters. But they put the ticket. Which Sahabi put the ticket? Nobody put the ticket. Even in fact, it's the wrong thing to ask people to give money to listen from an alim Quran. Seerah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Quran Kareem. People do this thing. But that's the way it is. My dear brothers and sisters, there are so many examples that I can quote. And people do this thing without any hesitation. But when it comes to Mawlid the Nabi, they have a problem. When we stand up for salutation on Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, that they have a problem. So let me just wrap up. I can quote at least 50, 60 examples of bid'ah that all those people are committing and they don't consider those bid'ah. But Mawlid al Nabi and salutation on Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam by standing becomes bid'ah. This is what is called hypocrisy. This is what is called misguidance. And this has divided the Ummah of Rasulullah Muslims have celebrated Mawlid al Nabi, Eid Milad al Nabi for centuries without any division. The Imam of all Salafis, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, in his Fatwa, in volume 5 of his Fatwa Ibn Taymiyyah, he writes, he says, Yes, I understand. Eid Milad nabi celebration of Eid Milad nabi is a new thing, it's a bid'ah. But I know that people do this thing for the love of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, and I'm very hopeful that Allah will reward them. Such a strong person is saying that Allah will reward them. But the people who follow him, they don't allow, not only allow, but they stop people from doing it. And they misguide people. They confuse people. My brothers and sisters, what happened that for about two centuries ago, three centuries ago, was when these European crusaders went to the Muslim land and occupied all Muslim, almost all Muslim countries, they planted this kind of mindset among some Muslim imams or scholars or ulama in order to divide Muslims. These colonial powers, when they went to the Muslim land, they saw that the Muslims loved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than their own lives. And if this love of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam remains stronger, that the Muslims are not going to give up their way of life, Islamic way of life. So what they did, they attacked on Nabi Alaihi Salatu Wasallam's honors. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fadail, Manaqib, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam honors and the love that the Muslims have in their hearts for Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. We can celebrate, in Saudi Arabia, people can celebrate Yom al -Watani. They have all other national kind of gathering. They have celebration of dancing and everything. In Pakistan, in India, in other Muslim countries, they have their national days. They have their many other days. And in Canada here, Masajid gets closed on 12th Rabiul Awal. But they remain open on other occasions. Because they want to undermine that the celebration of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, talk about Nabi Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is not significant. Our next generation, of our, our future generation will understand by the days. Canada Day is celebrated in order to people to know that this is the day is important for Canada and Canadians. Pakistan Day is celebrated because it's important for Pakistanis and Pakistan to know that's an important day for them. But Rasulullah Day is not enough because, oh, I'm following Rasulullah. You know what is the biggest deception these guys give? Oh, follow Rasulullah every day, you celebrate every day's life. So, my dear brother and sister, then you should celebrate every day your own occasions and events too. Why you celebrate your own children's birthdays? 
Why you celebrate your own Yom al -Watani? Why you celebrate your Independence Days? Why you enjoy vacations and holidays? So, Sahaba did not go on vacations. Did Sahaba go on vacations? They went to Caribbean and Cuba and uh, Maldives and other, you know, recreation places. Why don't you ask when you go on vacation that Sahaba did do it or not? Nobody asks. When it comes to Malik the Nabi, people remember, oh, don't you spend money on the lighting? Give it to a poor people. But when they have weddings, their own children, when they have birthdays of their own children, when they have their wedding anniversaries, they spend money. And they don't remember any poor person. But when it comes to Malik the Nabi, they remember every poor person on the planet Earth. When you do the lighting on, on, on Eid al the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, they say it's asraf. Give it to the people of the uh, flood victims, earthquake victims, hungry people. But their own way of life does reflect that they don't care about anybody. And this is what the deception is. That we do not hold Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam as dearly as we should. When, our, when somebody's child, boy or girl, graduate, graduates from high school or university or college, you know, they celebrate. They put their pictures on Facebook. They inform their relatives. They brag about it, which is a good thing. I don't mind that. So children's happiness is celebrated by the family. And the biggest blessing that Allah has given to all of us, Muhammad Rasulullah, Rahmatan lil Alameen, Khatam al Nabiyyin. We depend on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on our salvation, for our salvation on the judgment day. If somebody has some, you know, misunderstanding that I can go to heaven of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because I'm praying too much and I'm a very good person, then we'll see what happens to him or her. We depend on Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's intercession on the Judgment Day. Our future depends on Him. Our present depends on Him. And our past depends on Him. Love Rasulullah Alaihi Salatu Wasallam more than anybody else. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min walidihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'i. Nabi Alaihi Salatu Wasallam himself said authentic hadith, say hadith. That none of you have faith unless you love me more than yourself, your parents, your children, and all human beings. My dear brothers and sisters, the love of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is the essence of Iman. And when you love somebody, you talk about that person. So when we love our children, when we love our parents, when we love our wife or wife love husband, we talk about them. We want people to know that I love someone. And the love of Rasulullah is not important for us. So when we say we love Muhammad it's not just we pray like him. Yes, we pray like him. We follow his guidance. But we also celebrate his life. We also celebrate and we joy. Just like we enjoy the worldly uh, events, the, the Rasulullah days are more important. Nabi was asked, Ya Rasulullah, why you fast on Monday? He used to fast Monday and Thursday. He said, I was born on Thursday, uh, on Monday. So he used to celebrate his birth every every Monday. Yeah, we can do that too. But how many Muslims even fast in Ramadan? <laughs> Talk about nafil fasting. Not many do those things. So if once a year there is an occasion that where we can connect people to Rasul, connect people to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why we miss that opportunity? Why we miss that opportunity? We not, should not miss any opportunity where we can bring people to Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. My dear brothers and sisters, Eid al Nabi is very important. It's more than any other day for us. That is why, please don't get confused by these people. They have an agenda. Or maybe they, they are so ignorant that they don't understand the importance of remembrance of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, connecting with Rasulullah says. We get happy when we get a new job. 
new business, a, a, a newly born child, new house, new car. Everything that Allah gives us, we get very happy. When Rasulullah is born, not born, we just don't want to celebrate his, his birth. We don't want to be happy. We just want to be just like a normal day. Every day we pray five prayers. On 12th Rabi al we're going to pray five prayers. That's it. 12th Rabi al is the most significant day of the year. Ramadan is given to us through Rasulullah Sallallahu He gave us five prayers. Nabi Sallallahu gave us. Quran, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us. Islam, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi gave us. If somebody asks me what is Islam, I just say the sayings and the actions of one man the sayings and the actions of one man, Muhammadur Rasulullah That's it. Quran didn't given to us by Allah. Allah gave it to him and he gave it to us. So we trusted him and we love him. Let's celebrate Mawlid al-Nabi Let's don't get confused by these people who are confused themselves. Ham to dubeng sanam tum ko Allah in Kishar se bachai. May Allah keep us safe from the evil of misguidance and misguided people. May Allah unite the Ummah of Rasulullah around Rasulullah just like Sahaba were united around Rasulullah Ta'ameen were united around Rasulullah All Ummah is united around Rasulullah Nabi is dear to us, closer to us than our own lives. An Nabi Aula bil Mu'minina min Anfusi. Rahmatalil Alameen is because of his mercy. We, Allah is having us closer to Jannah. And on the day of judgment, because of the Shafa of Rasulullah, Allah will put us in Jannah, inshallah. Eid Milad al Nabi Mubarak. And may Allah bless all of us with the love and the obedience of Rasulullah. Wa akhur da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.